it's really an honor and privilege to be here and to be presenting a bit of my journey and my work with you. So the future of African fashion, the trends during COVID, right? Before COVID, the COVID pandemic, I think that international fashion was so focused on so many things that were very hazardous to our environment. So think about the fashion cycle, right? Um, we have like what we call the pillars or the axis of international fashion. New York, Paris, London, um, Milan, and even Tokyo. A lot of the fashion weeks, we see that people were moving around trying to you know, catch flights to be part of this fashion calendar. And that, of course, we know it poses a huge environmental problem in terms of carbon emission. Not only that, the process of making an apparel, right, on a very large scale, industrial scale, itself is very hazardous to the environment. So if you think about fashion, and the reason why we say fashion is one of the biggest polluters of an, our environment, the process of making an apparel utilizes 93 billion cubic meters of global, so it contributes, uh, sorry, it uses 93 billion cubic meters of water, okay? 85% um, of all the textile manufactured will be thrown away every year. So I'm sure you all know, you've been to um, Jamestown and Collegono, and you've seen heaps of fashion waste in the landfills. I'm sure you've seen that, I have. And it's not a great sight. This is all based on fast fashion. So when I think about African fashion and I see the future of African fashion, I see a shift in the dynamics and in how fashion will be transacted on a global scale. I see that there's an opportunity for African fashion to actually take a lead and it's starting to happen. If you look at, and I believe COVID has contributed to that because people have become more sensitive about what they're consuming, who's producing, you know, how fashion is produced, the amount of waste it produces. So people are very concerned about that. And so there's a global shift. And this is where I see the opportunity for us here on the continent. Sustainability. What does sustainability mean to you? To me, sustainability means protecting that which is native to you and finding a way to build out the economic value to commercially leverage your culture and your heritage. So what do I mean by that? In the past, Africa has been, I would say, a victim to appropriation of our creativity, right? Um, into new markets. You've seen a lot of international fashion brands that have used our creativity or our, you know, our heritage to create products that are sent and sold in markets at a very, very, very high price, and not, and and also don't in, we don't even get any credit for it, right? It's the same with a lot of things like cotton. So if you look at cotton, Africa produces six percent of the world's cotton, but if you look down the supply chain, almost all our cotton is shipped to Asia, processed into fabric, and then sold back to us at a premium. It's the same with cocoa. Cocoa goes into Switzerland and other markets, chocolate, and then sold back to us. So when it comes to creatives, it's no different. Our talent is taken outside, polished, and then sold back to us. I'm sure many of you will say that things have shifted a bit, right? And that, oh, there's Afrobeats that is being transported globally. Who owns the rights to that? I think that is the question that we have to ask ourselves. So we need, as Africans, to sit up and to take the opportunity that has been given to us as a people. We need to love ourselves, we need to be united, and we need to work together to be able to capture this new revolution that is coming because we've missed out on several revolutions, and this is where we have an upper hand because we, have a, we are a very young population and we need to start taking positions in places where we can make an impact and shift um, the dynamics. So what have we done as a firm? We look at not only creatives, right, through the Impact Fund for African Creatives. So far we have 
Within our portfolio, we have four businesses. We're launching an incubator um, in September, and we've invested in something called the Ambassadors Collective. What, how do we invest or what do we look out for? Number one, we look out for commitment from the creative, looking at the trends and how they're willing to succeed on a global front. Because remember, what we're doing, we're doing it here on the continent, but our goal is to go global. Because social media and technology has allowed us to have you know, the opportunity. It's created a seat at the table for us, and we can participate on global com conversations. So I think you know, we should not <laughs> discount that or leave that um, out of the equation completely. So we are looking at people that have the opportunity and the willingness to work with us through a cycle to take their stuff global. But production and, and manufacturing, we are hoping and we are creating opportunities to do that here. We've also invested in the metaverse. We've invested in a project called Semblance World, which is looking at the fashions, ability to be part of the, the metaverse. And with a tech team out of Dubai, we're looking to develop and also bring on board a lot of the African brands into the metaverse. Because again, when conversations are being had, when it's about money <laughs> and opportunities, we get left out because we don't have the same opportunities as people in the West. So we are creating that opportunity for, for Africans to also partake and also benefit from the billion dollar industry. I think I've talked about sustainability, I've talked about digitization, which is what Semblance and the Web uh, 3.0 movement is all about. It's about being able to meet new markets, it's about innovation, it's about creativity. And the other thing that is very important to us is infrastructure, and that is important to develop the, fashion, the future of African fashion. When I say infrastructure, I'm not talking about roads and bridges, I'm talking about intangible infrastructure, right? Intangible infrastructure meaning education, intellectual property. All of these things are very important for us to also be competitive on a global scale. So what we are doing is we're ensuring that the businesses that come through our portfolio have the ability to protect their IP. Um, they have the ability to also develop, so we have scholarship programs that we've started with international universities, one in Rome, one in the UK. And this scholarship opportunity is to ensure that a designer or a, a creative here goes into a new market, leaves their comfort zone and learn, you know, I believe in that. Because when you're in your comfort zone, you're so, you don't want to do anything. You want to just, you become complacent. But when you're shifted into a new market, you think differently, you meet people from different cultures, diverse cultures, and it allows and propels you to think differently. And when students go through that experience and they come back, it's complete, and we're talking about mindset here, it's a complete shift in the way of thinking and their creativity. So that's also very important. And manufacturing, I talked about manufacturing earlier. One key thing that we need to build here on the continent is manufacturing. Um, I talked about cotton value chain. Another project we're working on is looking at how to add value to that cotton that is going out to Asia and processed and brought back to us as fabric, and how that trickles down to the supply chain and the local fashion industry. Because I'm sure fashion designers here can attest to the fact that you know, one of the major challenges you have is accessing raw material, right? Access to raw material is an issue. So we are trying to find ways in, in which we can cater to that market, bring the raw materials here on the continent so that you, can, you don't need to import and pay lots of duties for importation, but you can actually access your raw materi materials here and focus your energies and your financing on different things, meeting new markets, for instance. And then collaboration. You know, earlier when I was having a conversation with Sefa, who has really put together this amazing space, she's a sister, I've known her for years, and I remember when she was starting this. One thing she talked about was the center here. The, the use of this free space is to promote collaboration, because yes, you have creatives who are into music, fashion, art, 
but collaboration is often an issue. And I see that here, even within the fashion industry, people don't collaborate. If you look at, <laughs> I always give the, this <laughs> example of fashion weeks in Nigeria. There are like four or five different fashion weeks, they don't collaborate. So how are we going to co foster collaboration? Because I believe when this industry is so, it's, it's in its infantile stage, right? So you can't compete. Competition is when you've actually started hitting profitization and you are, you are big and you have the, the ability and the marketing budget to compete with your opponent. I'm sure the banks here can attest to that. <laughs> but when you're starting your business and you're small, you can't compete. You have to collaborate because collaboration will help you meet those economies of scale so that you can start bringing the investment dollars in and you can be successful. Right, so we always want to foster collaboration between the program. So I'll give you an example. One of the investments that we have made, which is launching very soon in this country, November, is bringing together different creatives. So the musicians, the, the fashion designers, the architect, the um, beauty um, therapists, or you know, different, different creatives under one umbrella so that they can really understand the whole concept of collaboration to move the industry forward. So collaboration is key to meet economies of scale so that we can be investor ready and competitive. And the last thing that I want to, to talk about is that our ability as Africans to, to do it all, I believe we have what it takes, right? Financing is a challenge for us, especially in the creative space, because investors, and trust me, raising a fund, I've seen this. It's very difficult to raise money for creatives. I believe a lot of the banks don't even give loans to creatives because they see the fragmented nature of the entire sector. How do we address those things? What we have done as a firm is to ensure that we piece the fragmented nature together we give the creative infrastructure they need, when I say infrastructure, again, intangible, help you honing and st structure your IP so that you're competitive to an investor. So if you think about AFAC platform, incubation is when there are ideas that need to be turned into businesses. And at that point, we have a different level of funding that we give to creatives. Acceleration is when you're done and you have some kind of intellectual property that you can protect that allows an investor to take a stake in your business. And then growth capital is the last stage in which we support businesses. And I believe that by doing this, we create a compelling case, and hopefully in the future, we'll be in a position to also bring some of the big banks to come in and provide debt to, to the creatives that we've... So I believe that this is a great way to position the creatives. And the reason why I'm generalizing to creatives is because fashion is one of the subsectors of the creative economy. And the issues that we have in fashion are similar to the issues in music. And this, because we've started our entire journey around fashion, we want to basically have success in this sector before we move to other subsectors of the creative economy. But we have what it takes to do it. We have what it takes to partner and collaborate. We need to stop the appropriation of our creativity and our culture into different markets. As young people, we need to get more united, come together as a force, and really drive the prosperity and growth of the continent. And that is what we want to see is that, you know, prosperity, you want to create wealth that can be transferred from generation to generation. And I'm on that path to support fashion and to creatives to be able to achieve that goal. Thank you very much.